Joe Rogan came out with a statement. He said that Leon's head kick on Kamara Usman is the greatest head kick in the history of the sport and that nothing compares. What do you think? It's all opinion-based. Joe has shared his opinion. What do you guys think? It was certainly dramatic. And I will tell you, as a fan, we need those moments. And we have to have those moments. There are some fighters that are so doggone good. Oh, and by the way, Kamara's one of them. It's very hard to ever imagine they're going to get beat. That can be a curse. That was a curse for Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr. is the greatest boxer of the 90s. Not of 1999. I didn't say of 1994. I said 1997. He is the greatest boxer of the 90s. Oh, and by the way, you want to know who says that? Fellow boxers from the 90s. He had an entire decade. That is a massive amount of time, guys. If you become the best in the world at something, great job. That is a shocking achievement. If you become the best in the world at something and you remain the best for a couple of months, for a year, for a couple of years. Oh my goodness. I mean, you're talking about a very shocking thing. You're talking about a very, very rare thing. You look at an Olympic champion that comes back and does it again. You look at Michael Phelps. You look at Carl Lewis. I know that there's more that you can name, but you're showing somebody that's held it. That got to the best, got seen, got everybody coming after him, and they held it. It's rare. It can become a problem. Roy Jones Jr. was the best boxer of the night. That's true. He's not just known as that. That's accurate. He never, and I do mean never, had that massive fight. Some of you can tell me some opponents of Roy Jones Jr., but most of you have heard of him. Most of you are well aware that Roy, when I say Roy Jones Jr., I'm talking about a boxer. You know that. But if I was to ask you, what was a huge fight that he had? If I was to ask you what a huge rivalry he had? And if you're a real smart, a smart mark and you know you're boxing and you can answer both of those questions, I'll ask you, okay, where did he fight him at? And that's a big deal, right? But if you know fighting and you know big fights and you truly care, you could also tell me the venue. It's a lot like reading a book if you're ever in college. If you read a book and you got to talk about what it's, what it's about, the teacher will then ask you another question, which is who is the author? And if you can't produce the author's name, everything that you said about the book, you're not going to get a good grade. And I'll, I'll make that same comparison, an author to a book, a venue to a fight. And most of your hands just went down. There aren't 20 people out there. I speak to millions of people. I don't have 20 that could tell me the massive fight, the opponent, what venue had happened for Roy, Roy Jones. It's not a knock on Roy. It just proves the fact that it could be a curse from a business standpoint, right? That wasn't Roy's goal. Roy came up through the Olympics. He was just trying to prove he was best. Roy's perfectly happy with it. I'm sharing with you, there's not very many people that can fight on their own. They need an opponent. And there has to be a story. And there has to be half of the audience that's going one way and half is going the other way. It has to be that way. You don't have massive fights when you have a four to one spread. You have a six to one spread. You have an eight to one spread. It's just very difficult to do. They say that there's only two fighters in history that can draw on their own. They say that's Mike Tyson. They say it's Floyd Mayweather. I believe that that needs to be amended. I apologize. They say it's Mike Tyson. They say that's Oscar De La Hoya. I believe that needs amended. I believe Mayweather is now in there. I believe McGregor is in there. Either way, fighting is the world's oldest sport. Before there were courts, before there were balls, before there were referees, before there were teams, there were guys fighting. This is the oldest sport in the world. I just named four guys. That's all I have is four guys. I feel that I'm proving the point that success can come back and bite you in the ass. It bit John. John Jones had to leave a belt behind and leave a division just to create the idea that maybe somebody could deal with him. So when I tell you that we have to have these, I know Kamara's having a hard day today, but time, time is going to work this out. Kamara's going to like what numbers do. He's going to like how many more people are paying attention to him. He is. And today they're dancing on his grave. You have all these naysayers that have four or five years to build up their anger. I understand those things. It's going to take a little bit of time. But we have to have this within the sport. We have to have these dramatic moments. Now, when Joe talks about nothing compares, I don't know what Joe means. If he wants to talk about a dramatic moment, boy, did we ever get one. Was that the head kick heard around the MMA world louder 
than any other head kick ever delivered in the MMA world. Sure, Joe, Joe's right. It was a main event where there was one way to win by Leon. I had people tell me they thought Leon was going to win. They were going to go bet him. Going over to DraftKings, they were even sending me screenshots and tell me, I said, go back and change that. If you're willing to bet on Leon, make the extra money and bet on him by knockout. That's the only way he's going to win. And people, they told me no. Tommy from the Bronx had it right. Other people told me no. They thought he was going to win a decision. They thought they could, they could submit him. Look, if Leon's going to beat Kamaru, he's got to knock him out. Joe Rogan's talking about this head kick, and it was the greatest ever. Well, just for fun, let's go down memory, memory lane. The most technically correct, the most perfect head kick that we've ever seen within the UFC was Pete Williams over Mark Coleman. That's the one. Where if you can have a grand slam and you can turn your hip over and you can put the shin right on the person's forehead, that was the number one kick. Now, for dramatic factor, Gabe Gonzaga and Mirko Krokop. But that was for a dramatic factor. Mirko Krokop was Mr. Stand-Up. Gabe Gonzaga was Mr. Ground. Gabe's the one that threw the kick. One of the reasons it worked, it was the last thing Krokop was expecting. One of the reasons we were all with our jaws on the floor is the last thing that we were expecting. To add to it, not only did it end the contest, not only was it a knockout now for your grappler, it was an upset, but there was also the way that Krokop fell. It was scary. It was flat scary. He fell and his leg kind of got caught behind him. You guys have seen that. Whether you know the characters or not, whether you know Gabe Gonzaga and Merkel Krokop or not, you've seen that kit. It has been used for highlights for years. So when Joe Rogan says nothing compares, and it was the absolute best kick, not technically, Technically, it was not. The kick was very good, but in all fairness, it was different than Krokop, and it was different than the Pete Williams scenario. Very much so. Pete Williams set that up and threw a perfect kick. Mark did nothing. Mark was frozen. And the same thing with Krokop. Gabe brought that up, and he brought it up so quick. They were in punching range when Gabe Gonzaga throws a head kick. Mirko didn't move. That head kick that Leon threw does not work. Did not work. Does not get him a world championship and is not in the discussion right now. Had Kamara not ducked into it. I think that's one of the things that impressed Joe so much. That Leon showed the left through the right, used the, light, the right just as a blinder. It was a blinder. Anytime you're jabbing, anytime you can put something right in the guy's eye, very good. Put your hand out there and just hold it there. Blind him. You don't have to hurt him. Boom, that leg kick comes up. It was that Kamara went into it. So now you have a head on collision. Had Kamara just stood there and that kick landed, we're not having this talk. You had to have Kamara dipping and you had to have Leon coming up. Does that take away from it or does it add to it? Do you agree with Joe Rogan or do you like the other examples I gave? It's all about opinion. I'm just asking you yours.